In this video, we'll use RetroArch to set up Nintendo DS so it looks awesome. Let's get started. Hadouken! Just a quick reminder that if you're new to RetroArch, be sure to check out our RetroArch playlist. It covers everything from installation, configuration, the best settings for individual systems, and much more. We're always adding new videos, so be sure to check it out. Let's start off by going to the online updater and then the core downloader in the main menu of RetroArch. We'll scroll down to the Nintendo DS cores and we will download the Melon DS core. Desmoom is also a great emulator and has some additional settings not found in Melon DS. It can also be pronounced in many fun ways like Desmume, Desmume or Desmoomy Ding Dong Shibala Smack. But overall, I feel that I get a bit better performance with Melon DS, and with the shaders I use, I don't need the additional graphic settings of Desmoom. So Melon DS is my recommendation. To add Nintendo DS games to RetroArch, from the main menu, select Import Content. Then, Scan Directory. Navigate to the location of your Nintendo DS ROMs and select Scan This Directory. After it's finished scanning, back in the main menu, we should see our playlist entry for Nintendo DS with all our games listed within it. To launch a game, simply select it, then choose Run, choose the core you want to use, Melon DS, and then Run Again. Now just a brief disclaimer. I'm going to flash my system specs on the screen and if you have similar specs, you should expect great performance using the following settings. However, it would be best to view these settings as sort of a baseline. Depending on your system, you might have to lower them, or you might be able to bump them up, depending on your preferences. Whatever the case, feel free to play around to match your style. So, with a Nintendo DS game running, enter the quick menu, which by default is F1 on the keyboard and we'll start configuring our emulation settings. Next go to the core options and then graphic or video settings and turn the OpenGL renderer on. Now we're going to close and then reopen RetroArch for these settings to take effect. Run your DS game once again and open the quick menu. Let's go back into the core options and video settings and we now have the option to increase the core internal resolution. I like to set it at 3x. Because we're emulating the smaller screen of a handheld, I feel like going any higher with the resolution hurts overall performance while really giving diminishing returns. But you know me by now. If there's a setting that you prefer, by all means, please go with it. Now unless you like to tinker, the rest of the settings here can be left at default. Now we'll go back to the core options, and this time to screen settings. The touch mode option is what we're interested in. It allows us to specify how we will control the second or touch screen of the Nintendo DS. You can use the mouse, an actual touch screen if you have one, or the analog joystick of your controller. I prefer to use the right analog stick of my DualShock 4 controller for this purpose, so that's what I'll select. We can also change the screen layout here as well, but since the shader I recommend will handle this for us, I don't mess with any of these settings. So at this point, if you just want to play Nintendo DS games, you should be ready to go. But as usual, I like to use RetroArch's shader option to take things up a notch. So let me show you how. We'll begin by making sure that our shader files are up to date. From the main menu, go to Online Updater, and then down to Update Shaders. After the update finishes, we can close out of RetroArch. We're going to be using Mega Bezel Shaders from Hyperspace Madness, paired with overlays by developer Duimon. So let's grab the latest release pack from Duimon's GitHub page. I will put a link in the description below. And after the shader pack has downloaded, navigate to the shaders folder in your RetroArch install directory. Here we will create a new folder and name it mega underscore bezel underscore 
packs. It needs to be exactly this. We will then take the contents of the Deweymon shader zip and place them into this newly created folder. Now back in RetroArch, with a DS game running, first go back out to the main menu, Settings, Video, Scaling, and we want to set the aspect ratio to full. This will stretch the video to full screen, but it's necessary in order for the shaders to work correctly. Now we'll go back to the quick menu, and this time we'll go into the shaders menu. Turn video shaders on, and I also like to turn on remember last used shader directory for convenience. Next, go to load, then the mega bezel packs folder, the Deweymon mega bezel folder, and the presets folder. Now I will choose advanced, but if you find your system won't load the advanced shaders, you might try light or standard. We'll then scroll down and enter the Nintendo underscore NDS folder, and you can see that there are a number of shaders here to choose from. So again, as always, feel free to tinker around and see if there's one that you like best. My personal preference is the ADV LCD grid for games that don't require a vertical alignment, but if a game does require it, I go with the vertical ADV LCD grid. Now I do find that sometimes the shader is upside down when loaded. I don't know why this is, but it can be easily fixed by going to shader parameters and then scroll down to flip and rotate and set flip viewport vertical to 1. Lastly, once you have a shader dialed in where you want, it's good to go into the save menu and save it as your preferred preset. Now let's take a look at what some of my favorite DS games look like using RetroArch, Melon DS, and Mega Bezel shaders. So that will wrap it up for this video. If you've enjoyed this content and would like to support the channel, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and perhaps even subscribing. Until next time, happy gaming my friends.